Hey guys, what's up? This is B coming to you from GNA today. So what I want to do in this video today is I want to do a handguns for absolute beginners. Okay, if you're watching this video and you're considering buying a handgun, I strongly, strongly advise you to not just take the advice of videos that you watch like this. These these type of videos will help you and will help you to know how firearms work. But if you have no experience and nobody to help you, you need to find somebody that can help you. And find somebody in person. Because sometimes there are things that you might do that, that they don't cover in videos and where a person can't be watching you one-on-one. -on -one. And there will be people in your area, There'll be you can talk to, um, especially if you buy a gun at a gun shop, they will know uh, people who have handgun classes who can teach you the basics of handling handguns and how to use them. And a lot of times, those handgun classes and just general firearms classes will be very cheap. Even, I've seen them sometimes where they're just free. Now I just want to talk about the absolute, just basic, basics of, of these handguns. And I've got several of them laid out here, and I'm not going to leave them all out because I don't want to overwhelm you. But I just want to kind of show you a, a variety of these, and then I'm going to just basically focus on one of these to just give you an idea. Now, there are handguns in all shapes and sizes. They come from shooting little tiny bullets to shooting very large bullets. This one shoots a little tiny one, and the size of the gun doesn't dictate how big the bullet that it actually shoots. And one other thing I want to say is, as I'm talking about this, I'm doing it from experience, because I was raised around firearms, and my wife was not. And she's still kind of scared of firearms, but uh, as I've kind of tried to educate her, even though she really doesn't, <laughs> doesn't want it, but as I've tried to show her, um, I've thought about things that that she's had as a hang-up that she didn't understand and uh, try to, to go from it from that perspective of what what did she have misunderstandings about but this one shoots a little tiny bullet but that doesn't the size of the gun doesn't really matter and then this one shoot right here shoots a big fat bullet now this big rifle which my wife looks at and she she's just terrified of this shape of a gun and it took her to took her a long time to realize that this gun it's, it's just a replica, but the bullet that this thing shoots is a 22 caliber bullet. It's a very small little bullet, and the the bullet that this shoots is very small compared to the bullet that this thing shoots. Okay, now let's talk about caliber for just a second. These two shoot the same caliber. That one shoots it its own caliber. These three shoot the same caliber and this one shoots its own caliber. So what does the word caliber mean? When you hear the word caliber, now a lot of times when we use the word caliber just in everyday language, we're talking about the quality level. When you say that's a high caliber, you mean that it's it's high quality. And it's kind of has a vague meaning just in general language. But whenever you're talking about caliber as it relates to firearms and handguns, it means something very specific. The caliber refers to how big the bullet is that shot out of that firearm. Now here's a nine millimeter round and the whole thing together is called a cartridge. This part at the end, you can see there's two halves to this. The part at the end, the part that actually leaves the firearm when you shoot it is called the bullet or the projectile. This part right here, this the back, really two thirds of this is called the case. This part, the back side of this that I'm touching right here, stays in the firearm after you fire it. This part leaves, this part stays in the firearm. Now, like I said, this is a 9mm cartridge, and you can see right there it says 9mm. And this is a very standard cartridge for handguns. It's probably... I'd say probably the most common cartridge for handguns. You'll see cartridges that are nine millimeter. You'll see uh, cartridges that are dot four five. You'll see cartridges that are dot two two LR. You'll see cartridges that are dot three eight zero. You'll see cartridges that are ten millimeter. Those numbers they're they're pulling from the two systems of measurement that we have uh, kind of in the Western world. You have the standard system, which is like inches, feet, and yards. 
But then they also use the metric system, which is millimeters, centimeters, and meters. And all of these are, all the different calibers are mixed up between those two, which makes it kind of confusing. Like this one, the nine millimeter is in the metric system. Now, whenever you see a dot two two LR, that dot two two is under the standard system. It's dot two two of an inch. Like when you see three eighty, that's dot three eight zero. That's in the standard system. It's dot three eight zero of an inch. Or when you see three fifty seven dot three five seven, that is dot three five seven of an inch. Okay, when you see ten millimeter, that means that it is. 10 millimeters. It, that's pretty self-explanatory, which is one centimeter. And what that nine millimeter means is if you were to take the bullet, the projectile, this part on the front side, and if you were to measure it at its widest from its profile, it would be nine millimeters or very close to it. Sometimes it, it varies from that, but that's what it means is it's nine millimeters at its widest point from its profile. Now this is a nine millimeter round nose or solid. This is a nine millimeter hollow point. And it's easy to see why that's called a hollow point. They take it and this, the end of the, of the bullet of the projectile, this silver part that leaves the firearm is hollowed. And the reason it does that is it makes it easier basically to splash whenever it hits its target target. It makes it open up as it hits it. It's coming in like this and hits and then opens up. Now here are three very common calibers for handguns. This one is 22 LR. This one is the nine millimeter that I was just showing you. And this one is a 45 ACP. And again, what that means on the 22 LR, if I were to measure this at its widest point, it's about 0.22 of an inch. This nine millimeter, if I were to measure the projectile at its widest point, it would be about nine millimeters. On this 45 ACP, if I were to measure the bullet, this part at the end that leaves the firearm, if I measured at its widest point, it would be 0.45 of an inch. Okay, and then the other, the other main component to a cartridge is the back side right here. And on this one, you can see in the middle, that inner circle, that is called the primer. So what happens is on the gun, there's a, there's a piece of metal that hits that. And in that primer, it has its own little charge that whenever that hits inside that primer, it starts a tiny little fire. Then between the bullet and the back side over here and the primer between there, there is, there is gunpowder between there. There is smokeless gunpowder between the bullet and that primer. So that primer starts a tiny little fire. And then that tiny little fire catches all of this gunpowder between here on fire. And then of course, whenever it does that, there's nowhere for that gas to go but to blow this piece out. And then that's what propels it down through the barrel is those, as that explosion happens, as the gas is expanding, it just expands out in the direction that it can go. Okay, now let's just focus on one handgun here and let's talk about uh, the parts of this. Now, again, handguns come in all shapes, sizes. They have different ways to to actually shoot the, the way that it actually hits the backside of the cartridge. And I'm going to check to make sure that we're safe. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to open the slide up and we'll talk more about this in a little bit. I'm going to look right there in the chamber and I can see right there in the chamber that there's no round in there. And I can put my finger there, feel that there's nothing in there. Now what I'm going to do, and I, I do not do this, but I just want to show you what what's happening here. The slide is locked back. Right now you can see there's no bullet in the chamber. I'm gonna physically take a round and put it in the chamber. And that way you can see what, what they mean by checking to see if the chamber is clear. Right there you can see there is a round in the chamber. I'm gonna dump that out. You can see it's empty. Round in the chamber, not a round in the chamber. So this firearm is clear. There's nothing in the chamber. There's no magazine. I can look down through the magazine well and see that there's not a magazine in this firearm at all. Okay, now, like I said, there's all kinds of components and pieces to a firearm. And there's all kinds of ways to hit that little primer that I showed you on the back of the cartridge. On this one, it uses an external hammer. So if I were to pull the trigger on this, 
it would drop that hammer. Okay, it's going to drop fire at once. Just to show you, pulling the trigger, and of course, again, there's nothing in the chamber, but you can see that the hammer just drops, and that's what hits a firing pin that goes a little tiny piece of metal hits the back side of that that cartridge to fire that bullet, that projectile out of the barrel. This is the thing that holds the cartridges that goes into this firearm. This thing that holds these cartridges is called a magazine. Okay, there's a lot of people who call them clips, but there's an easy way to know the difference between a magazine and a clip. And there's, you could say a lot about that, but the easiest way to know the difference between a magazine and a clip is a magazine has a spring in it, or it has some way to physically move cartridges up. Most magazines have a spring. This one has a spring that's down here that's pushing these cartridges up to where they're ready to be fed up into the chamber of the handgun. This is a magazine. A clip basically just holds the rim of the cartridges. And if, if you're brand new to this, you very likely won't encounter a clip until you know a whole lot more about firearms. Most everything you're going to encounter if you're brand new to it is a magazine. This is a magazine. So this holds the rounds in here so that I can easily take this and put this holds. You can see right there. This holds 19 rounds. And on most magazines, it has this where it has um, kind of holes drilled in it or it has slots in it where you can see how many rounds. And you can see that there are cartridges in there all the way down to 19. So I have this thing completely filled up with cartridges. Now at this point, again, I'm just going to safety check this. There is no round in the chamber. And whenever I put this magazine into the gun, it clicked in. There is still not a round in the chamber. And the reason I'm emphasizing that is my wife took her forever to realize that. There is still not a round in the chamber. Okay? So if I were to pull the trigger, and I'm not going to do that because that would be stupid, even though I know that there's not a round in the chamber, um, there's not one in there. Okay? And I'll demonstrate that to you. Okay? I put that up in there. I'm going to take this magazine back out, and I'm going to open the slide up again, and you'll see there's still not a round in the chamber. Now let's talk about about uh, about some of the different components of a, of a pistol. And most pistols are going to work like this. Most pistols have a slide. So this top part is the slide. See, I can take this. I'll hold the bottom half of this firearm and pull this, and you can see how the slide, this whole top half, moves back. Of course, the barrel stays in place, but that this top part is the slide. So this is what they call racking the slides sometimes. And so sometimes for people to check to make sure that it's not that it, there's nothing in the firearm, after they're done, they'll do this about three or four times just to make sure there's nothing in there, even after they visibly check it, look in there and see there's not around, and still go just to make sure that there's nothing in there. After I put this magazine in, there is a magazine with cartridges in it, but there is not a round in the chamber right now. What I would have to do now is, and again, if, if you're a beginner, please don't do this. Okay, I'm down in my basement. I'm down here by myself. I'm pointing the gun towards um, a door that goes out into another, uh, into another room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the slide back, and I'm just going to lock the slide. Okay? And you can see in there, there's a round. And it is ready at this point now, after I drop this slide, it's going to feed that bullet right up into the chamber. Okay, I'm going to take this mag out. And it kicked the round out of the chamber there. Okay, and most handguns have a slide lock. There'll be a, a bar right here. Or there'll be something to push up. But as you push this back and push up on that slide lock, 
it'll catch this where it holds the slide in the rearward position. So once I put the magazine in, there's nothing in the chamber right now. After I rack the slide, bring it back, and let it go forward, it's going to pick up the round that's at the top of this magazine, and it's going to put that round in the chamber, and then it will be ready at that point for me to start firing this handgun. Okay, here's another very, very important thing that you have to know if you're a beginner. Do not put your finger on the trigger until you are absolutely ready to destroy something. If you're not ready to destroy something, do not put your finger on the trigger. And I see this all the time in people putting stuff on Facebook and videos. Don't put it on there because you get used to as a little kid when you have a toy firearm, you just run around with your finger on that trigger all the time and nobody ever tells you anything because it doesn't really matter. Here you're dealing with something that can that can destroy things and can destroy a person's life. So I want to make it clear, do not put your finger on that trigger until you are ready to shoot. And so whenever you see somebody who knows what they're doing, they keep their finger straight like this until they are at the range or they're wherever they're at and they are absolutely ready to pull the trigger. Not that you're 20 or 30 seconds away from ready to being pulled the trigger. It's where you are ready to pull it at that exact moment. Keep your finger straight. And a lot of times on firearms, like for instance, this one right here, it even has a little dimple right here to remind you. Put your finger right there and keep your finger off of that trigger until you are ready to pull it. That basically covers what I wanted to in this video. I wanted to show you, talk about the calibers and the sizes of the bullets. And I also want to show you how these firearms just work in general. And there are all kinds of other subjects we could go into. We could talk about all the different type of safeties there might be. We might we could talk about all the different ways that they actually fire. We could talk about uh, different ways that these all these handguns break down. We could talk about all the different types of ammo within 9mm. You can have all kinds of types of 9mm. There are way too many subjects to cover. When you're dealing with this, this is a deadly tool. Now it is just a tool. You're the one in charge of it. Your brain is the one that operates this, but it is a deadly tool. So know how to use it, learn how to be careful with it and how to be safe with it. And then after you know how to be careful and safe with it, then, then you can have fun with it and, and practice and become proficient at using this tool. I hope that the few little things I've gone over in this video today will be of benefit to you. Thanks for watching today.